We'll begin from where we left, the India-China border standoff and the many questions that still remain. The biggest one is this, will there be a war between India and China? China is certainly gearing up for something. Consider these three steps. One, China appointed a new PLA commander for the Indian border in the beginning of June. Two, China started evacuating its citizens from India. And three, unusual deployment and hectic activity at the border. Not to mention the Chinese media that has been beating the war drums. What is China up to? And how is India responding? India is following a three-pronged approach. First, military preparedness to deal with any kind of Chinese provocation. Second, dialogue, both at military and diplomatic levels. Multiple meetings have taken place. And third, infrastructure development and connectivity. This is going to be India's best bet in the long term. Let's break it down for you. India is giving priority to dialogue. Senior military-level talks between India and China are underway as we speak. Sources say besides Galwan, all existing border issues are being discussed. Representing India is the commander of 14 Corps, Lieutenant General Harinder Singh. From the Chinese side, it's Major General Lin Liu, the Corps commander of the South Xinjiang Military Division. The meeting began at 11.30 a.m. Monday. It was held in Moldo, on the Chinese side of the LAC. And multiple rounds and multiple uh, levels of meetings are on. We are still waiting for more details to emerge from there. Meanwhile, the top brass of the Indian Army is being rushed to the border. The Indian Army Chief General M. N. Naravne himself is expected to visit Ladakh soon. He will review the security arrangements. The visit has been announced. The date hasn't. Back in New Delhi, the Indian Home Ministry held a meeting to discuss India-China border management. Officials from the BRO, the Border Roads Organization, the ITBP, the Indo-Tibetan Border Police, and the CPWD, the Central Public Works Department, were present along with other central forces. On the agenda was infrastructure work along the Chinese border. At least 32 India-China border road projects have been fast-tracked. 32, a detailed plan of action has been devised. India is stepping up its defenses. At the same time, India is preparing for combat too. New Delhi has granted more financial powers to the armed forces. The three services have been given special financial powers. They can buy any ammunition or weapon of up to 500 crore rupees without seeking clearances. In other words, emergency purchases of up to 500 crore rupees won't be delayed. Reports say a list is already being prepared. This is a list of equipment that can be procured in the shortest possible time. And this autonomy is not just financial, it applies to decision making as well. Indian forces have also been given full freedom to respond to any Chinese misadventure, meaning the army has been asked to not hold back this time. The rules of engagement at the line of actual control have been altered. Field commanders have been sanctioned to use firearms under quote-unquote extraordinary circumstances. Remember, in the last skirmish, there was a debate on the use of firearms. Agreements between India and China prohibited the use of firearms during face-offs. As India makes these moves, China, of course, is watching closely. And speaking through its state media, Threats are being issued. The Global Times says, and I quote, if Indian soldiers use firearms against Chinese soldiers in the future, there will be a different picture in the border areas. If your soldiers cannot even defeat Chinese soldiers in unarmed clashes, the guns and other firearms will not help them. Chinese television too is threatening war, saying that their troops will move in to quote unquote, liberate Kashmir. Listen to this. There will be a limit to Chinese uh, patience, and I can assure you that if the Indian side refuses to withdraw from the Chinese territory, war may break out. And if we follow the Indian logic, then does that mean that China has the right to send its troops to the Indian occupied Kashmir because the Pakistani side does not feel comfortable with whatever India is doing in the Indian controlled Kashmir? Well, remember, there is no free media in China. All commentary serves the Communist Party's purpose there. So this is not a stray comment. China appears baffled and it's issuing threats. In the past, India never took preemptive measures, only offered localized resistance. But Delhi is changing the game to give its forces an edge. This wasn't the first border standoff between the two countries. And we can safely say it won't be the last. What can India do to be better prepared then? 
Experts suggest three things. Number one, improve infrastructure. India must bolster its border areas in Ladakh. For far too long, India has focused on a much weaker country like Pakistan. India has invested too much resource along the line of control. But it did not put in place concrete infrastructure along the line of actual control. It's time to change that. And India is working on that. When it did, China provoked and how? India must take some lessons here. It must put together necessary infrastructure. The army would need for any future confrontation with China. China poses a bigger threat to India at the border. Number two. This is what India has to do. Increase technological surveillance. Be it connectivity or surveillance, China is better positioned at the border as compared to India. China has set up a 5G tower on the Everest, for heaven's sake. India is still working on basic roads. If New Delhi wishes, it can improve mobile connectivity and remote surveillance capacity at the border. Learn from Israel, perhaps. It uses digital surveillance to track movement along its borders. It's able to provide effective measure and response for domestic and foreign threats. Israel surveillance technology is among the best in the world. Yes, the terrain is different and India's border is much longer, but the idea is the same, securing borders using technology. Maybe it's time for that orbit shift now. And the third thing that India can do to be better prepared is to populate this area. India must not leave its border areas vacant. It must repopulate borderlands with its citizens. Start by resettling nomadic farmers to borderland areas. Encourage them to reactivate agricultural activities. Provide them legal ownership. Forces should be directed to ensure free movement of civilians along these areas. Indian presence in these areas will not only justify India's rightful claim over these lands, but will go a long way in hindering Chinese incursions.